Hey, this is a quick video about this tool called Excaladraw. If you go to excaladraw.com, it lets you basically just use a whiteboard that's in your browser. So as you as you make uh, drawings or text or whatever on the screen, it just saves it locally in your browser. So the next time you go into excaladraw.com, it's still there. So it's not saved on a server somewhere, which is kind of convenient. In fact, it also means that you can use it while you're totally offline, which is pretty cool. The kinds of things that you can do with it are, you know, you can make scribbles, you can uh, add text, and you can add shapes. So let's say you wanted to um, actually make something sort of uh, flowchart like. Uh, as you're drawing these shapes, you can see that they are kind of um, just all different proportions here but if you hold down shift it'll keep them in line just like you'd expect in any other program and if you uh, double click on it you can add some text uh, just by you know clicking any of these things you can go back and change their attributes so for example um, what font size do I want I can change it to extra large and I can change to a less kind of hand write, handwriting looking font one that looks kind of like uh, monospace and, um, and you can change things like where it's aligned, all the things that you'd expect from any kind of drawing program like Illustrator or a flow charting program. So uh, it also has this kind of like sketchy quality that you can turn on and off to various degrees. So if you want something that really looks sort of clean, you can turn off the sloppiness. Of course, uh, stroke style and width, all those things that you'd expect from any program like this. But it's all here free and uh, really easy to use. So for me, I'm going to use this for my class uh, because what I can do is actually turn on collaboration by clicking here. And when I start session, I can give this to link to any of my students. And as I'm drawing, they can also be drawing. And here I'll see an indicator of how many people are involved right now. There are these libraries where uh, you can actually browse these libraries that have been contributed for different things like software design and architecture and so on. But uh, for me, I'm more interested in the whiteboard part of it and not really using this as a charting application. I mean, it does a lot, but I actually use other programs for making flowcharts and things like that. But let's let's pretend we're going to make a flowchart here. I can add another element here and one here. Uh, maybe this one's supposed to be rectangular, even though I use the uh, shift key to make it a square I can I can go back and change its attributes I can even do things like uh, uh, change the uh, rotation of it right so um, again I can I can change attributes here like the opacity and the line weight of this one and also uh, maybe the stroke color but over here at, in my flowchart I can say um, you know yay and now it carried over the fact that I just changed the opacity and uh, and the color so I'll put those back and this one I can say uh, too bad so um, oh that's interesting that it sort of it's centering it based on the well, I'm not really sure how it's centering it but in any case we've got um, I oh that's interesting I wonder how that works so I think what's happened here is that maybe because I've rotated it, it didn't like to attach the text to it but let's let's go back and try again so I'll just make a, a rectangle I'll double click and I'll say too bad one thing I, the reason why I'm doing this is to show you that you can actually use arrows between them so if you uh, click here and then click here we've got an arrow that's going between them now it's trying to actually uh, make a curvy arrow but if I click again here whoops okay let me try that again <laughs> it's an interesting uh, option that it has so if you click once you can kind of click out here and double click to kind of um, connect the two and you can put a uh, you can put some text here and again I could change the size of it so the interesting thing is I made a curvy line but it's still connecting the two of them and uh, and kind of does a, a pretty good job of of keeping them uh, looking good for this one, let me try again to make just a straight line. If I connect from here, I guess if I just double click, it'll make a straight line between them. And that works just as well. So, so it kind of keeps them connected. So that's pretty helpful. The other thing is you can highlight everything and say that it should all be bold and um, should all look kind of sketchy. Uh, maybe everything should have a uh, yellow background, cross hatched or hatched uh, uh, or. Uh, I guess, what is this called? Hatch, hatching and cross hatching and then solid. Uh, the other thing we can do is if we've got it, you know, where we want it, and this is actually supposed to all be linked together as a group, I can just right click this really just like any other program. I can copy this to the clipboard. I can uh, group them together so that now they all move as one. I can even right click and say that they should be locked. And that way, anything else I'm doing 
uh, I can still kind of move things around, but this one will stay where it is. So lots of features. I think, you know, the charting is one thing, but the idea that you might just use it as kind of post-it notes, uh, you know, let's say it has a pink solid background and you just kind of draw something here and double click in there and say, this is a note. You can kind of just use it as in the same way that you use something like uh, Google Jamboard, but with Jamboard, you have to actually log in. And, and this is kind of nice that you don't have that restraint if you're that constraint if you're trying to um, just operate in a classroom and just do something quick and not require students to log in with Google. Uh, the other thing you do that's pretty handy is adding an image. So let me just plop an image in here. And uh, there it is. Again, maybe this is the wrong orientation so I can rotate it. And uh, let's see, yeah, if I hold down shift, it kind of locks to zero degrees or 90 degrees. So, I mean, anything that you'd expect from a normal program that, that does this sort of thing is all right there for you. You can also, in the, under this additional tools, use a frame tool, which allows you to uh, make a frame that uh, you can drag different objects into. So you can see it turns blue, and now it's a part of this frame, and the frame moves around anything that's contained within it wasn't use, useful in that case, but uh, you can imagine that it's a, it's a way to kind of group things together uh, logically. If I do control Z, I've got all of the undos that I'd expect to have. Uh, maybe there's a limit to undo because I can't keep undoing, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't think there's anything missing really that I'd be looking for in a program like this. And um, the, the other thing to know is that if you can kind of pan around and zoom out. So it does seem like this is sort of like an infinitely large canvas that you can work in. And if you have a lot of students working together or a group of people uh, in, a, in a Zoom or a meeting or something, you could, you could kind, of, um, kind of use this as like a central place where, where you share ideas. So hopefully it does something for you. This is mostly a reminder for me uh, that this tool is out here and, and good to use for teaching. So I'm probably going to be back using this um, throughout the semester.